Hi everybody, the Mature Simmer here. So, welcome back. Looks like it's August here on this server. So, I'm doing this one quickly because the FM said next two days. This is the second day, so I just want to make sure I get what I need done here. So, I have got to move things from a silo near server, near server, near field 75. So if this looks familiar, this is the map I was on where I harvested this field here and then harvested the bunch of fields behind me a good amount. This is Poppenberger. So that is where we are at. So taking a look at this, I think it's up this way. So I'm going to try to be a little more aware when it's early. Alright, so there we go. About my headlights. I actually had the premiere yesterday, and I had someone in the chat say, Hey, turn on your lights. And I had to let them know, Well, um, it's a recording, so I we're not doing this live. So I can't, but you know, at least I, I took it under advisement. All right, so that was my concern is, is there a road here? And there is. So, so yeah, this is, oh boy, is there? No, it looks like it does go through the trees. I do see it in the mini map. So a little bit of bouncing. So they estimated this should take me maybe half an hour. So we'll see if that's accurate. So this is one of those maps. I'm not sure I commented because I know when I worked on Schwag's farm, I thought, wow, this is actually a map that's, that's kind of nice. But this one is, not that it's not nice. It's just I don't know that it would be something I would do. I'm thinking that's it. Actually, it's behind me. So, never mind. I knew it was on the road, and I knew it was there somewhere. Um, I just gotta figure out the nicest way to do this without hitting whoever's sunflowers these are. Oh boy, I'm not gonna be able to do that. But I can do that. That'll work. All right. And he said a small silo. My concern is it's one of these bins. I'm hoping, because I see the dreaded auger sitting there, that typically should be to fill it, not to empty it. And again, obviously, he's got it permanently parked, which is a good thing. All right, let's figure out how we get there. But yeah, um, pretty flat map and strangely shaped fields for sure so let's see can i i mean i'm assuming i don't have to oh boy is this really one i need to do something with the auger on i don't understand really that would seem totally backwards on how to, on what I needed to do. Let me see. Alright, well, there's nothing I can do here. Because these flat bottom bins, I just remember, were kind of a pain. Yeah, there's nothing around here that lets you empty, but it doesn't seem to make sense that I'd have to move this, because that's to fill it. And to use this gigantic thing to empty it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now it also is interesting in that 
Um, Cause yeah, that's where you're doing it. I just I feel like I'm gonna move this, and then it's just gonna be a disaster for him. <sighs> but I have to try it, I guess, cause I just don't see another way. So I'm gonna put this over here, you know. And again, it's not like moving that is insanely hard or anything, but no, this is not. It's the convey all. Like it's not. Now let. Oh, okay, there we go. So if I pull away. Alright. I want to try to not move anything as crazy as that's going to be. Because I, I just don't think this is what I need to do. But, um. I don't know. So, let me zoom out here, and then I will do this, and then I'll bring the truck around. I, I know what I'm trying to do, because if this is what I need to do, like, I just need to get it somewhere where this is underneath that spigot, and... And then I just have to put the truck underneath, underneath the auger there, which will be out, out by the road. So I may want to go ahead here and kind of pass it up a bit, because obviously I, I don't want to get like stuck in the trees or something. But like in theory then alright well maybe I do alright so this is start filling oat canola alright so we'll do that and then we'll turn here I was going to say I know these I can't damage So, I mean, you know, because the thing is, like, once I have this set, then I'm okay. All right, I'm going to go up here and then turn around. So I want to be facing the right direction. And then it's just a matter of when am I over or under the trigger point. Let's see. There we go. All right. Start filling. Oat. All right. So I'm not obviously perfectly under, but it works. It's the lovely farming simulator. Now, since this is the 150,000 liters, I can just fill this. So it's going to take a little bit. All right. It never really stopped pouring, but hopefully have everything but now oh so I actually wanted to go the other way so never mind so I'm gonna try to take a look again I don't know this map so there's a little bit of the exploration here these diamonds that are clear are quite interesting I'm assuming they're part of the map like they they even go around the edge of the field there but weird But then I need to get to the silo on 36, which is where I was dumping everything uh, when I was working here before. So this is the map I was on with Bellatrix. Now in theory, like this should work. And I should be able to continue here. I just want to make sure because... Yeah, okay, so there are fields north of me. I just want to make sure I wasn't getting anywhere near the edge of the map. My concern is I remember near 36, we were cutting along the back of houses, 
So I'm not sure I can get there via the main roads, but that seems crazy. I don't know what that sign was. I'll look at it next time now that I know it's there before I crash here. Gosh. Well, there's a little bit of lag. I'm like, this isn't... shouldn't be that hard to drive. I'm like wiggling all over, and usually that's indicative of some sort of lag thing where I just can't catch up to my steering. All right. So that's the thing, like, this is the main road. <laughs> One would think, then, that you'd be able to do things from the main road. And I suppose there's areas there, so when I get near 36, maybe if I can pull out, but see, there's those hedgerows. So... Hmm... Because, yeah, you can... There's ways across this little canal. I suppose if it's gonna work, it's gonna... well, can I get right there by the houses? Looks like past that yellow car, there might be a bit more of an opening, or there might actually be a road. Okay. There is a road. Alright, then this works. So that was my hope, is like, that I've got some way to get here, which I do. And there might be a better way, so this again was the field, and I don't know if this is in still from when we harvested last time, or they planted again, or not. So, this is the FM that I was talking about that said they had two farmhands, and they had to fire them because neither of them could get on between the two of them over a four-month period, neither of them logged in at all. And certainly here, not that an FM should have to sit there and, and question, like if someone, if a farmhand was saying, no, no, I was on, um, and, it, you know, it just doesn't look like I did anything, but I was on blah, blah, blah. You know, in essence, they wanted to lie that they, they were on when, in fact, they weren't. Um, in this environment, on the Discord, it says every time we log in and log out on every server. So, like, it's easy for FMs to see, hey, this contractor was here, there. So, um... It may have even been him that, because of what I was doing and everything, and a little bit of that it was earlier on, I got on here and then finished the contract, and then he ended up sending me a, hey, looks like you worked whatever, and then can you complete the contract when you get a chance? Because I had forgotten to go back on the Discord and do it. Um, I had been in a rush and obviously a little bit newer to the community, because... This was certainly probably within the first four or five days that I was in the community that I was here, so it was just not a dynamic I was used to. Frankly, still one that I'm not terribly used to because a lot of my, far of my farm work here has been uh, as an FM. So similarly, I'm not running a contract here uh, on the Discord page. So I hesitate there because he did send me a contract, air quotes, that I've looked over that has a lot of detail. But what it seems like is he doesn't really run any fields with cereal crops unless someone wants to do that. So I'm guessing Poppenberger is the name of the town, and I'm guessing those yellow signs when we come back are going to say exactly that. But yeah, short of getting here, like this is not that uh, not that challenging for sure. So as he said, I, I would agree. I think he's accurate that this isn't that bad once you know what you're doing. So I'm taking longer, obviously, the first time. As I was chatting when I was on Lomeric's farm yesterday and working the olives and that we had had a conversation that, yeah, one of the benefits of being a farmhand versus just being a contractor is you kind of get to know the farm. 
Let's see. So now I should be able to... Yep, there we go. Uh, maybe. Alright, I guess I was a little too far for... Come on. Alright, so maybe it was one of those, like, I did just hit the trigger, and... So I'm just not sure that I have enough room to turn around now, because this is the one thing. I don't think... Sometimes there's like a it was like a purple dot that showed you where to go for thi for things like this for augers and so forth. I don't know that that is how these work, but yeah, I'm gonna have to make another trip here to get the canola done because I can't empty this. But uh, again, I'll keep talking if I fill up by the time I'm done. Great. If not, it took a while, so. I will stop and, and then pick up again when it's full. But being a farmhand, like, now that I know I'm going to be doing this regularly, because this is one of the things he'd like me to do, is uh, to do certain thing, things once in a while. And this is an infrequent one. He basically, I don't know that he'd be telling me, but he said periodically, as needed, move things from si silo on field 75 to... 36. So, obviously, I'm assuming, like, he's got field, it looks like 76 is this color, I don't know that 75 is. Yeah, so it looks like he has all of these, so my guess is, as he does those, because this is now sunflowers, or this time he had me do oats, but, you know, next time maybe it would be sunflowers. But I'm sure these fields, rather than carting things back, uh, almost. All right. So there's going to be a bit of a bit of a challenge there. But other than that, again, it's not terrible. And this is one of those trucks that I could turn the Jake brake off. So that is why you're not hearing that really loud throaty rumble, like I have with Lomerix trucks, where I can't do that. So, and this, now that I look at these, yes, they're definitely different, where this is a, a boxy, probably a Kenworth or something. So, you know, again, it's, it's making some noise, but it's not that, you know, I probably shouldn't make it myself, because first, A, it's terrible impersonation of a truck. I, I, I sh would not make money doing that. Um... Oh, I wanted to see the sign. Yep. Poppenberger. So, that's what it is. And then, uh... The whole point was I turned off the Jake brake to not have that sound, and now I'm going to recreate that sound and still have it in a really bad format. So, now that that's done and I, I you know, I slapped myself right away as soon as I did it, you can't see this road. So, um, I mean, it's there, it's wide, that's the good thing, at least I'm not getting hung up on anything. Now that I know I have a road, I'm good. So, you know, that's the other piece of this, is, like, I've made this trip one time, I now have a kind of a lay of the land of how I would do this job. And even though I probably only have to do it once a year, because I'm sure they'll just harvest what's over there, and then... I just need to move it eventually, but the people harvesting would be going ahead and putting things to that silo so they can move along quicker. So we will go here, and then again I have enough room that I can circle around. So there's this. And right now, I, I still have not agreed because them sending this contract, like, it, they worded it like a contract. And there's just a lot of wherefores and heretofores and whatever. It's not, like, quite that way, but I'm, I'm making the point that it's it's more convoluted than I think it needs to be. So I kind of summarized, hey, this is what you want. Let me make sure that you you agree, yep, that's what I want. 
you know, out of all this, this is what I get. So some of the confusing language that exists in the contract is around the fact that, as Bella had said, they kind of will let me use their fields, and I assume um, I get some, you know, maybe they give me what I make off of it or something. But basically they were like, if you want to do cereal crops on any of the fields you can but then it included a bunch of clauses about you can't use these fields because they're this person's you can't use these fields because they're these persons so it just made for a pretty giant paragraph on discord and you know they've got it as a pinned message for us to refer to so while they wrote up a contract this, this raises a thing in FOC and Farmers Only Club that I'm not familiar with. I don't recall seeing anything in the wiki. So there was discussion in FSN about, hey, if you're doing anything kind of unique um, or anything that is an agreement, they, they had a mechanism for agreements that was on the website. There's nothing like that that I see here, nor do I recall anything in Discord, and he's not doing it in Discord. He's basically creating a sheet and saying, you know, if you go to this form and you sign the contract, and it's a Google form, is what I, he's implying, then we're good and we can get going. So, but then there's daily chores, similar to the daily chores type of thing I have with NAB, where he wants me to do, I think, three things, and again, because I'm not doing them yet. Like with NAV, I've done them enough times I can tell you what I need to do there. I'm no longer looking at the list. All I remember is sheep pens and, uh, oh great, it's always fun to sink when uh, you're driving. So hopefully, all right, maybe I can get to the point where I'm filling and it'll all be good. All right, so I just need to line up here. So let's see. Mm, no, it's not not triggering. There we go. That's triggering. Now hopefully it'll keep going now. All right, so that's the trick. So kind of close to the road, but of course every time I put this here, it's going to move. I didn't want to move the end because it might work well for their um, harvest and so forth. All right, so since I had a disruption anyway where I was going to have to cut something out, I went ahead and took a look at what he was asking so that I could speak intelligently. And I'm almost forgetting it again. But it's basically monitoring his BGA, his sheep, and his greenhouses. So those are in essence his daily work that he's looking for me to do and just keep track of how much time it takes. So unlike Nav, who agreed, hey, however long it takes you to do these daily chores, I'm paying you 5000 a day, uh, he's going to pay me his hourly rate, which in this case happens to be 13000 an hour. So he's definitely uh, my best paying employer, but this is where once again trade-offs happen. I'm not sure there's a lot of activity on here. Um, the one person I was working with at one point, I think it was Hefe, not very chatty. Uh, so definitely, you know, and, and there was no voice chat or anything. So even if you're not working together, if people are on the server and you can like talk with each other, it, it certainly is just a different dynamic. It's just more fun because you're, you're not playing by yourself. And obviously you can do that in voice chat channels where people aren't even on the same server as you. So like I said, there's nothing magic. Oh, I'm going to keep blowing by this every time. I like feel like I should be able to see it. Got a little better this time, though, so maybe one of these days. But this is the last piece, and then I should be able to just drive over from 36 back to the farm. But so that's what I'm being asked to do, and he's saying every two to three days in 
a period of time and then more frequently with uh, with other things all right so I'm guessing this guy's coming on as a contractor so there might be a contract out there and then um, he's asking me as if I know what the heck is going on so I'm gonna answer honestly so give me a second here all right so I just want to get back there because at this point I'm done now I'm helping so this was the field this is 35 so I was going here south and then Hefe was up here doing these to the north and um, you know other than I I just felt I guess maybe it was a little sarcastic in in how they interacted they didn't seem very open to wanting to chat much and to some degree, obviously, when I'm working on the videos, it's not like I'm actively chatting too much, although I certainly have gotten pulled into things, as you've seen across the episodes, where I'm working and then suddenly I'm right at the end and I'm like, uh, yeah, here I am. I, you don't have any other footage because I spent the last hour and a half chatting to people. So, but anyway, um... So there goes Sean Gamer. Sean Games 14, so maybe he's 14. Um, I doubt he was born in 2014. He could be, I suppose. That would make him, what, nine? Um, I suppose he could be a nine-year-old on here helping out. That's the joy of Farming Simulator. Uh, definitely could have folks and so forth. But I suppose while I'm here, we can take a bit of time and just try to figure some stuff out. So he's got a BGA. That's a little obvious. So it's here. So... I see. Alright, so he's going to have him... I assume it looks like lime. But that's what I think he'll be doing. Alright, so he's running silage in the BGA. So I just need to figure out where he's getting silage from. Right there, easy enough. Those are fermenting silos. If you're, well, that one is. I think that one might be too. I'm guessing he's trying to line up or something. Okay. I thought he was going to start working there, but he's deciding to do something else. I was hoping to get some dramatic video, but uh, don't know that I'm going to. It doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. So, okay, so maybe the fields I was working are what he's supposed to be doing. I suppose, let's see. Okay, so material missing, grass silage. I'm wondering if he does not know how to use GPS. This should not be that hard, or maybe he's finally setting his line. All right, well, he dances around. We'll go look at the other one. All right, so there's silage here that shouldn't be full. Okay, that's the uh, first one. Material is missing. Oh, these are small, so maybe it is. Oh, okay, so. I'm confused. What do we need to do with the BGA? Because if he's distributing, in, in this it lets you uh, work on things. All right, and now he's not spreading. Let me ask him if he needs any help. So he might just be fertilizing, which seems weird because he's, um, Okay, this is fertilized zero. And this is fertilized 50. All right, let me help him out. All right, so perhaps that's some of it. He's got silage rolls here. So it's possible he's dumping things in, but it would seem like this is distributing here. So 
unless he runs out of grass, you know, and maybe that's it. Maybe it's just monitoring that stuff is running because he did talk about in the off season. So I guess that, that might help the questions that I have to him. So as I said, I'm trying to make sure I understand before I agree. My confusion is, again, it was BGA, sheep, and greenhouses. Have yet to find the sheep, have yet to find the greenhouses. We'll do that in a second. But he had talked about getting on two to three days in the winter time, like the off season, and then during planting and harvesting a little more frequently. And so my confusion and question to him is, well, unless I'm misunderstanding what you're asking me to do, all of these things are just productions that run at a certain pace. They don't change how quick they run during time of year. I mean, I suppose you could make the argument with sheep that somehow maybe there's some dynamic in the game or how FOC has them operating that in the warmer months they eat faster or something. But other than that, like the BGA and the greenhouses for sure are going to just run. All right, so everybody else is pretty small here. So some FMs I've talked about, and I made a mistake because I told them, oh, I really liked the Poppenberger map when I worked it. It was Schwag's map that I really enjoyed and said, you know, this might be a, a good alternative. But yeah, this one's just way too flat and way too boxy, and it's just angled to be angled. So this is not one, if I became an FM, that I would become an FM on. This would be toward the bottom of the list. All right, so basically they own everything here. So that's good to know because, aha, they are little round sheep. So here they are. All right. So 24,000 food. Let's see, what do we got? And then there's greenhouses right here. So they've got water. They've got a cistern. Easy enough. So I can definitely do this. It looks like they've got three sheep barns. Um, again, I don't know if they then want, you know, but once again, they've got this set up pretty simple. And you can do stuff like this on a map like this, which is, again, one of the kind of less interesting things. All right, so I can just move honey around. So that's just from their bees. They didn't say anything about that. So they're growing what? Strawberry? I, I cut off talking. Sorry. I didn't mean to sound that way. I don't know. I, my brain stopped working. Strawberries and strawberries and strawberries. So I'm guessing these are just all the greenhouses. So three sheep pens three greenhouses. Obviously it's just keeping water in the greenhouses unless I understand, misunderstand something. Might be grabbing the product out. But I suppose again if I hop in here and go to, well I don't even have to do that. Why am I doing that? Um, I can just go to the production screen. Yeah they're just selling. So it's literally just letting the passive income keep going. So yes, they have three greenhouses, and then one, two, three sheep pens. And so right now, they are full, and then I assume they just move the wool to the spinnery, so there might be that part of it. But yeah, this is, the hardest part is what I just did, and that happens very infrequently because it probably happens once a year at harvest time, and that's it. And that's possibly just when they haven't finished it, because they said that may be requested once in a while. So it didn't sound like they said, hey, at the end of the year, you're always going to move stuff. Maybe whoever's helping with the harvest decides to do it, makes the money, whatever. It's just like if someone decides they're not going to run it, they're going to do that. All right, so note to self, um, you can't jump to those silos. So I need to, I'm running to that location <laughs> from here because this was the closest I could get. It's really not worth driving another truck over or anything. 
because uh, it's not that terribly far. So you can see the silos over there. I'll be there in 30 seconds or whatever, but I need to move that auger back. Oop, deer floating back to earth now. So this is a map with levitating deer, like so many in Farming Simulator. It's very nice. They at least are levitating at least at a reasonable height. Because I've had maps where they levitate, like, above the treetops. Here they only seem to be three feet in the air. But I need to move this back. So basically, once I do the last load in the future... I just need to um, make sure that I put the auger back. So, and again, these things turn like in the opposite direction a little bit. So they're a little goofy. They don't move super fast, but... So I'll try to get this set up again the way they had it, because I'm assuming that's the way they want it for harvest to be able to fill this silo. And that would be what, again, I would expect if I'm having a farmhand do stuff. I would be kind of irritated. And maybe, again, maybe this guy does everything with contractors, but I'm guessing not because the last part of what we have in the agreement is it does appear... So hold on, because I want to be over that red... I might have actually done a pretty good job. Just go right there, I think, and we're probably fine. Uh, I suppose this doesn't use fuel, so maybe leaving it running makes sense. So at this point, that's what I've got, but basically they it sounds like they've got something going on in real life that might go into early August, which basically means... This contract might last one or two game years, and that's it. And I'm sure to some degree they're doing that a little bit potentially as a test, because I don't know that they then wouldn't need help later, but I suppose then they come back and do other things. But I think what they're trying to do is, as opposed to their farm just kind of stagnating, they'd like to keep all the passive stuff going. And it's a simple way, given that they just fired two folks who couldn't get in regularly, to see if I can be reliable because I was upfront with them like I don't know that I'm going to have time to do what you want as frequently as you want it so so that's where we're at I'm going to go ahead and go do nav stuff and then I'll be back with whatever I need to do next uh, probably on Lomeric's farm at some point so I will see you in a bit over here early morning on Lomeric's farm and I am beginning the pruning. So it doesn't seem too terribly bad with the updates. Of course I say that and now it's leaving a bunch of vines on the back. So I think I know exactly now that I'm doing things in meters because I think last time I was here on his farm I was trying to set things up in feet because I normally play that way. Well, had normally played that way, but now that I understand the added distance and so forth that you're using in FOC as far as the added width you can do with some headers and stuff because of GPS, I'm now just running in meters, and so the vines are three meters apart, and so that's what I had done when I was using the olive harvester for example so I know I now know that trick now I also did verify um, when I was talking to Lomeric and the folks that were on the other day that I was on here with them is yes this delayed draw is just something that happens with grapes and it's just I've never done it on this scale before and so this is a normal thing again it's actually doing pretty well today because at best I have one person on here in addition to me but you can see like those other two rows I did were pretty quick so the nice thing is I think we're gonna move along pretty quickly here 
and that will help certainly to uh, to get the work done faster and then move on and move back to plowing. I did see the plow was exactly where I had left it before on field six so it seems he's leaving some of this stuff to me and some of it I think is the fact that I think only 18 and 19 were the ones that kind of he had listed as plowing and then he said time permitting do the others so what I'll probably do is I will finish uh, six just because it's the right thing to do I mean at this point I'm on there but then I'll go back up to 18 and 19 and I'll focus on those and that way if he wants to run AI on 11 and 13 if I can't get to them it's uh, it's a little simpler to do that um, I'm not sure that the first that it was set on the first row I think that was a little too quick there we go so we did get some cutting but the nice thing is going back to what I talked about earlier being a farmhand on a farm you get to learn it pretty well so it doesn't take long if you've played the game just like it wouldn't take long if you were an experienced farm worker and being a farmhand on a new farm for someone like once you understand the equipment and you understand the basics of hey this is what I do this is what I'm what this task requires you can hop in on a new farm and jump in and help out pretty quickly just as being over on J dudes farm earlier in the episode you know just trying to figure out where things were even having to fumble around a bit with that silo of like hey how do I use this do I need to move the auger so forth and so on it took a little bit of effort but I had the general concept having worked farms for thousands of hours at this point so I am coming up on probably a relatively pointless milestone if we're going to be honest but hey it's those things as a data person you track um, I'm getting very close and probably will hit I would imagine in the next month or two at most um, where I will have exceeded the hours I spent in FS19 in FS22 so um, I think I had 2112 hours in FS19 I just cleared 2,000 hours not too long ago in FS22, so uh, we're getting close. So that will be something, once I pass that, I'll probably, obviously, mention it in an episode. So something to look forward to, if you care. It's a sad thing, I suppose, in that, you know, between the two I've spent what would an amount to two full working years of time within two farming simulator games because <laughs> basically if you're a full-time employee uh, two thousand hours is like a full uh, a full year of work is is kinda how it's it works out because you have two weeks vacation here in the US so you take away eighty hours because It'd be 2,080 hours normally, but but at the 2,100 or whatever, it would be two full years without any time off. So that's a little nuts, but it's also a testament to giants and, and what they've created here. Um, that there's in enough interest and enough entertainment that people can do that and keep coming back because yeah one of the things I was getting a little worried about just from uh, uh oh am I gonna have something happen again uh, I had come across something on Steam that was free to play and was actually quite intrigued by it and had spent six seven hours going and, and poking at it and like hmm this might be fun 
but it was definitely something that really couldn't have made the channel because completely out of line with kind of the general content like I try to keep it somewhat kid friendly here um, once in a while things might cross a line here or there but I would not call it a mature channel but that would have definitely moved it into that so there's a game called Prison Architect that has some stuff that's questionable in, in various things. The story mode has, you know, photos and stuff, and there's nudity and this and that and whatever, and so um, it was one of those, like, wow, if I really, like, start playing this, it's going to be a time suck, and it's going to then just take away from being able to do stuff on the channel, but went ahead and and did that work, or that work, went ahead and played the game, uh, there's a few hours left, I, I still spent a little bit of time this morning because it was just more trying to figure out, alright, if you finish story mode, does it like unlock something different, but I think I always had the create new prison option in the beginning, um, but it was maybe 8 to 10 hours of time, and I probably could have shaved an hour or two off if I had been playing a bit more aggressively, so not a whole lot of content in the story mode. Basically five chapters that it takes you through, and each chapter is a different prison with different sets of problems, so it somewhat serves as a little bit of a tutorial mode, because there wasn't a whole lot I had to go read or look up but there were a couple dynamics that weren't working. But at the end of the day, once I got through that, because there's a bunch of DLCs that add different locations, like you could have prisons in the jungle, and you could, you know, so they're, they're just cutesy things where, hey, you're wearing jungle uniforms because you're hot instead of whatever you're wearing because you're somewhere else. But they're just visual changes, I, it looks like, and definitely mixed reviews. It's a product that's created or published by Paradox, which are the people that do City Skylines, which is probably how it came up as a recommendation for me. Uh, but again, being a free-to-play, I'm like, I'll try it. And initially I was like, wow, I'm strangely intrigued by this. I mean, I, it wasn't a farming simulator type grab, you know, because that was, in essence, how I got sucked into sharing 4,000 or spending 4,000 hours of my life um, over the last X number of years, whatever it was, um, you know, taking part in stuff in here. Uh, it was the same thing, like Farming Simulator, even though there wasn't a free weekend, like I decided, hey, I'm going to actually take the chance back in the day where we didn't have the internet and online stuff and it was like you'd see a game on a store shelf and be like yeah I'm gonna go ahead and spend twenty dollars and and hope it was kind of the same thing with farming simulator but you know that grabbed me and it wasn't quite that but it was surprising to me because initially I'm like all right this is probably gonna be unenjoyable like most of the things that you I come across um, you know they some people love it but you know, we all have our preferences, and a lot of times I'll do the free-to-play stuff and realize, yeah, not anything that I would do long-term, or it's too tedious, it's too dull. And initially, it, I was expecting that, and then I was suddenly like, wow, this is actually really fleshed out. And I think it is. I think they've done a, a good job for what they've done. But, like, there's not a whole lot you can do, because you're just obviously dealing with a prison, and while there's a lot more that they've packed into it than you might initially think, um, you know, there's this whole tree of unlocking capabilities and so forth, so you could almost think of it as a technology tree and something like, um, you know, Civilization or World of Warcraft or any of those kind of things, where you've got to do this thing to unlock other things after it and so a lot more detail than I expected in something like that 
but after that first two three hours where I was like wow this might be something now that I've gotten through to the end I'm like yeah it would be something that you would poke at once in a while but it certainly wouldn't pull a lot of my time and it's not like it was free free I think they had it been on sale for 80% off but I'm just not sure it's even worth it because it would just be one of those that I'd spend time in for no real purpose and I've got plenty of things to do so I don't need other distractions with that so so the crisis averted I'm not going to be diverted into something that's going to take time and then suddenly you'll start hearing oh I couldn't get on I couldn't do the work so I'm right back in here doing this and and making great progress across this vineyard as you can see so I am much happier with how it's updating because at least the previous two rows I went on are you know, fully cleaned up and it's, it's not really that delayed in how quickly it's doing things so A, it makes it a lot easier to tell where I'm at um, but it just avoids any confusion and uncertainty of like, hey, is the line right or whatever? Although I'm pretty sure that's exactly how they plant. I don't know that you can get the vines closer to three meters. So I think it's kind of the default, but it's always that first that first row that is the challenge of making sure that you're truly on a straight line that you can then snap your track to like we're able to here. So certainly nice and much better than what I had done where I was off a degree or something and it makes it impossible to do this but the other value I've had from all the gameplay I did today the um, the silo work for J Dude and the last couple days figuring out hey these are three meters you know those are things I can use in other gameplay I've got that is new knowledge that I haven't had after 4,000 hours of, of playing. So it's go coming full circle to my first mention here in Farmers Only Club of things I brought up in FSN all the time. Like, you can play this game a long, long time and still learn things you didn't know, which is part of what makes it uh, interesting. And, and easy to come back to because it's always a bit of a challenge. That was a lot of the discussion we had yesterday because uh, it was kind of the how do people pick games they they pick and spend all the time they spend like what does it take? Uh, wasn't sure if I really got the beginning of the vine on the back so just wanted to be sure and it ultimately came around to, like, why did we all choose that this was where we were going to make it a time sink in Farming Simulator. And the general consensus of the various folks in the chat and that we were all talking together was exactly that. There's always some kind of a challenge, a little bit of something that you're having to, to do or figure out or schedule or whatever. And so there's enough there to keep it from not getting boring, but not so much there that it is exhausting to play. It's definitely, you know, the other consensus that was echoed by everyone is it's just a very relaxing game. It doesn't require a lot of focus. You can just do things, and sure, sometimes you don't have that focus and you run over crop with a harvester because you daydreamed off or were watching or doing something else and misjudged the timing but you know for the most part it's a game you can do while doing other things which is how I'm able to have as many hours in it as I have because while yes it's on and I'm and I'm here and I'm doing things usually I'm also doing something else so with the with the confluence of work from home and that, um, 
it just makes it that this is something I can do more often than not. Like, um, you know, even that prison architect game I was doing, that wouldn't be easy to do if I was trying to respond to email or kind of listen in to a meeting. I'm just attending to gain a little bit of information. But I can absolutely be quite successful in farming simulator in those environments. You know, I can... I've talked about it before. I turn around, it's probably taking 30 seconds to a minute to go down these these rows. Once I lock onto the GPS, there's nothing I need to do. I can turn away from the computer, read a couple emails, respond, come back, turn the tractor around, start moving, turn back, keep working on email. So that's the way I'm able to do that much time into it. It's not that I'm independently wealthy and living a life of leisure. Not quite there yet, but working on it. So at this point, you know what I'm going to be doing. I think everything is probably long enough having popped around on J Dude's farm. I think that's all I've got specifically to cover. The only thing I'm going to add is another uh, kind of bullet point in why I moved and how it's still kind of being validated. So I've been able to see they've updated information. There's still not a date but on the generational farming move and now it's moved to August and there's actually been some jokes that have started and people have posted some memes of you know tractors jumping row you know uh, berms or whatever and kind of like what starts to happen when you're on a server for too long and whatever so again there's clearly a few people because um, I think it was just one of the generational farming servers that they were commenting on. They're moving, but I'm just not seeing leaves flying off. So again, this is where, like I said, the the lack of graphical update, it just is disconcerting when you're doing stuff like that. But if one's working, the other's working, because... Like, this has not strayed from these sticks at all, so I am very comfortable that these are three planted three meters apart. And so if they are, then as long as GPS works as it should, which it does, um, I can just keep doing this. So it just validates once again the fact that that kind of thing for someone who's trying to be consistent and trying to then work the competition appropriately like those things would have frustrated me to no end over there um, and and so it's just reinforces my comfort that I've made the right decision for me uh, because it changes the dynamic I mean once again I I um, modeled what I was doing based on the fact that they were going to honor what they said they were going to do, which was seven to ten years in a generation. It's going to be well beyond that. It could potentially be going up to 13 or 14 years, depending on when they really actually move people off. Um, at that point, someone with crops might get to the point, and I say might because I'd have to do a financial model on it, of is there that break-even point that they flip past at some point if you're on there for 10 years because once again if it was we might be on there till 15 years or we frankly just don't know how long we'll be on but that's not what we were told we were told it was going to be seven to ten years and so I didn't test year 11 or year 15 or year 30 because I might have made a different decision then um, because it, it, you know, the data might have required it. But then I would have basically felt like, once again, I'm going to not be competitive because I acted on the rules and someone who didn't 
you know, it worked out for. It's kind of like being upset with the slackers or the procrastinators at work where you go ahead and do what needs to be done and then management decides yeah, we're not actually going to require that thing we told you we were all doing, and then the people who never did it, who just basically procrastinated and ignored it, just laugh at those of us who did and said, see, it was a waste of time, I knew it was a waste of time, you spent all that time doing it, blah, blah, blah. So, um, to me, again, that's where things were incongruent the me with the messaging. It's, you know, we're a high-quality farming simulator community here and then it's not run that way so um so anyway off of that that that's really all it was was just the data point of not only did it go, stay where the the end of july as it was which was already well past where we needed to move because they had gotten distracted by other things now it's even longer so and again, I'm sure for the same purpose, because they were distracted by other things. So, just reinforces that I'm happy to be here, and happy to be falling into uh, what exactly is what we should be falling into. A, re a consistent, repetitive uh, rut, if you would say. Some people would be like, you know, this is what they don't like about farming simulator is it's it's farming it's it's repetitive to some degree you know he's got olives he's got grapes we're gonna work them every year that I'm on this farm um, they're not gonna stop growing they're not gonna stop needing to be pruned and so forth but you're not pruning every day you're doing it once in a while in the meantime you're doing other things and so, you know, it, it just will continue at this point. We're settling in to that trend of keep working. And when it suddenly comes to the point where I'm like, all right, I'd like something a little different, maybe that'll be the point that indicates to me, yeah, now's the time to pull a trigger on a farm manager slot. Still not at the point where I've gotten notified that I'm eligible to do that. I'm anticipating that's going to happen this week sometime. So it should happen over the next few episodes that I'll be letting you know, hey, I've gotten notified and, you know, if it's relevant, if I think there's anything there other than they've said, hey, you can apply for farm manager, go to Discord and, because I, I know it's a Discord command where you do apply FM and you just go from there. So, um, but then until I'm ready to do that, there wouldn't be a whole lot. And just showing you, look, what I just told you is what the words in this message that I got say. Don't know that that's worth a visual, but if, you know, let's say there's a lot of information, I may go ahead and share it with you because part of what I'm sure is the value of people going ahead here is there's a farmers only club series that has lasted more than three episodes which is the longest uh, no that's not accurate i did find someone who was doing i think they got up to 15 or 20 episodes but it was kind of that model of farming simulator videos that is just text on time lapse with background music so it's not someone who's really talking to you uh, but once again, I do th believe those were older, they're a year or two old, and not sure that they really did a whole lot of explanation or talked about a lot of things. But, you know, the hope is folks are, hey, there's an active far Farmers Only Club YouTuber out there. I'm interested in this, and if nothing else, I'm interested in following along and seeing what they're doing. And now that we're in there you know there may be people who are like yeah I'm just gonna keep watching it so that I can learn and therefore I'm gonna share what I learn and so it would be the same pace that kinda they probably would learn so so with that I am gonna keep this going and I am going to 
let you have say you reach the end of another wonderful mature simmer farmers only club episode if you haven't hit the like button i would appreciate if you would do that helps get the at youtube algorithm to notice that there's content here that people are enjoying and will therefore recommend to other people that will help the community grow as i try to hit that magical 1000 subscriber mark getting closer we crossed over 850 so we're we're at the point where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and then we're just going to enter another tunnel with another milestone it's just the nature of what it is just like playing farming simulator well we've gotten all the grapes done this year and we've made 300,000 but we get to do it again next year but all kidding aside uh, every subscriber is valued I try to I certainly read every comment uh, I do my best if there's something to reply to I mean I'll at least say thank you for commenting or something I'm small enough right now and get few enough comments that I can do that I can't promise I will always do that but I can promise you my intent is absolutely I will do it as long as I am able once it you know if it ever gets to the point that I just can't keep up with it uh, you know and I th I think the viewers would understand like I don't think you'd want content to stop because all I'm doing is responding to comments on the YouTube channel in my free time and that's all I have time to do is respond to commenters um, that'd be wonderful because I'd probably be at hundreds of thousands of, of uh, subscribers at that point to have enough comments that would chew up four or five hours of my day but that wouldn't be interesting either um, to spend four or five hours of my day on it I, I, to some degree it would but a lot of times it's just people saying hey great video and so just replying back thank you for the feedback um, and doing that a thousand times is far different like right now you know the few of you who take the time out of your day to comment I, you know you're you're a lot more valuable to me I suppose than when I have a lot of, of folks which is not really a great comment when I look back at it because those people are still valuable but it just it, it becomes too much and it becomes that that tipping point of diminishing returns where right now I'm very 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 grateful for anybody who takes the time um, and it's not that I wouldn't be grateful for people but it just having the I'm human I only have so much energy and having the ability to maintain that at the same level with a much larger scale would be difficult so I'm just being upfront and honest but I think we're a long long way away from anything like that and it's honestly something I don't know we'd ever get to so I mean once again someone like Daggerwin that's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers you know I think maybe they're getting thousands of comments a day across all their videos you know I don't know because I'm not managing their channel and I, I don't get to see the back-end management board that I use with YouTube to be able to comment with you guys where I can see that I get a comment every four or five days so that's the thing I mean I'm looking at the volume right now I absolutely will respond to every single person but eventually it could get to the point where that will just be too onerous. So with that, as always, I've gone on and on at the end much longer than necessary. I will go ahead and continue to do this, and I will see you next time.